Hello everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm um, <clears throat> Jose Boloa. Uh, great to have you with us. Uh, we are so honored. We are so glad to know that you are really, really <clears throat> massively up subscribed to our YouTube channel, Congo Dialogue. I'm sure that you start to get used to our channel, especially in the English version, because we'd like all entire Africa, speak uh, English speaking people and French speaking people so they can may understand what uh, our guest, especially Mr. President Kilele, used to say all the time he come to the stage and uh, come to the show as soon as we got an interview with him we'd like everybody to pay attention and everybody to understand what it really he means in, in terms of uh, uh, drc politics a drc uh, situation what is happening uh, this nowadays so i'm so glad to know that you are part of the show do not hesitate the number is going to be appear on your screen so contact us on facebook on whatsapp and all uh, media so that we can be in touch with you today i'm also delighted to welcome one more time president uh, of uh, national congolese party uh, who is uh, son excellency mr kilele let me welcome him and together we are going to discuss what's happening this nowadays in our country drc congo all right okay stay tuned hello mr president hi thank you how are you doing well i'm fine i'm existing Thank you so much for your time. I know you've been always busy, but uh, when it comes to DRC, you always stop whatever you are doing and give us your time, maybe 30, 40 or one hour so that you can discuss. And I'm sure all the viewers are very glad, especially your, your argument, your statement, especially your view as well. So they are very, very happy about it. Is there any way you can say to them? Well, I have to thank them to, be, to pay much attention to what I'm saying. And uh, we welcome the feedback. It is pushing us to work harder and harder and to shed more light on the Congolese issue, which has been confused by people's profiteers, those who would like to always keep Congo down and who spread lies uh, around the world on the reality that as Congolese we know better than them. So thanks for the, the feedback, and uh, we will continue to shed light. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. So keep in touch with us. Uh, Josue Boloa Facebook, Jemadari Kilele Facebook, WhatsApp. You can see the numbers going to appear very soon. Or uh, before we go further to our topic of the day, let me just get one two questions which I've received from an inbox of one of our viewers. Uh, I forget about the name because I, I wrote it somewhere there. Obviously, the person also wrote to you and called you even uh, showing the unhappiness about uh, you raising issue about Felix Shekedi. This is not our topic today, but I want to, first of all, you to answer the person, the viewers. First of all, thank you so much, Minister. You are there in France, in Paris. You wanted to show happiness about the way Mr. Kilele spoke about uh, Felix Shekedi. You, you treat him as an educated person, he doesn't have a diploma and so on. Is there any way you can answer to that uh, viewer who raised the concern about you attacking Felix Tisekedi, saying that uh, he is nothing about uh, in terms of education? Well, I know the person who, though I have never met him, but he introduced himself to me as Mr. Kayembe, living in France, in Paris, more precisely. And I did answer him. Uh, he said I should stop criticizing his hero, called Felix Chesekedi. And I should know that all Chesekedi, the late Chesekedi uh, children are educated and this and that, etc. Anyway, he praised them too much in his, uh, his attack against me. Uh, and this is what I told him. Uh, I'm not really uh, criticizing him passionately as if I hate him. I don't hate him. We criticize the deeds of what human beings do. And I proved to him that his so-called leader is not a leader. He, he is nothing, as you said, he is nothing. And it is true that he's not educated. Now, not at this stage where Congo will continue accepting uneducated people uh, to lead them. Uh, Congo is not a garbage where they must come and throw whatever shit that they think Congolese people will swallow. We're not ready to stomach again that. They brought us Hippolyte Kajambere Kanambe, 
so-called Joseph Kabila, who is a stupid and uneducated guy, uh, from being a taxi driver, a shoe cobbler, and uh, a roadside mechanic in Tanzania, to becoming the president of a country like Congo, which has educated many people and which has produced a uh, few presidents in the world. The late Rwandan president was educated in Congo. The Ethiopian president was educated in Congo. And we have got many examples of many uh, people, many, uh, many uh, uh, educated people and uh, well of people who came from Congo, like the uh, cinema actor Jean-Claude Van Damme. He was born in Congo and he started primary school in Congo, etc. So we have got an example, but the international community has, uh, you know, seen Congo as a, a, a dumping site where they bring uneducated people that they blend as, a, they brand, I mean, as, as leaders. Uh, the so-called Joseph Kabila didn't finish even grade three of primary school, but he became a president. Now they are planning, uh, they are pushing forward a certain Moise Katumbi to be a president, another guy who didn't even finish grade four to be a president in Congo, as if in Congo we don't have educated people. The same thing they want uh, to push the son of the late uh, Etienne Chisegedi, this so-called Felix Chisegedi to be the president, yet he knows nothing about Congo, he knows nothing about politics, he wants to boast because he is a Chisegedi. So we can't uh, continue leaving the country to be taken into hostage by a group of criminals and a family uh, which reacts tribalistically and which think that Congo belongs to the Chisegedi family only. So the way I can criticize Chisegedi is the way I can, and I have been criticizing many other so-called leaders who are corrupt in Congo. So it is not only Felix Chisegedi. I don't hate him as a human being, but I despise his, his actions and reactions because he's a corrupt person and we know well what he is. And he's nothing, he cannot lead Congo. He cannot lead Congo. I think this is not uh, the topic of the day. Obviously, if you want to, part of, to be part of the topic and uh, you are part of the UDSP, what you call IDPS party or political party, you are more than welcome to come to the stage with me, Josue Boloa, so that you can have a clear understanding, clear discussion, so that you can prove yourself that if Mr. Uh, Felix Chiseke is really uh, worthy to be a leader, of the giant country called DRC. So we don't want to spend more time about it. Mr. President, I think we'll have more time to discuss about this uh, issue. Mm -hmm. If only one of the pers person, I would like also you, uh, Mr. Kayembe, you are in France, or who whoever is part of the, the UDFS uh, uh, party, you can want to make a video, send to us on my WhatsApp number, then we can have your view and uh, prove the point, contrary to what Mr. Kilel is busy talking about. But today is in highlight. Uh, we are going to talk about the, the conclave or the forum is taking place this week or uh, this weekend here in South Africa in Johannesburg, especially in Midrand uh, area where uh, Mr. Moise Katumbi is taking, um, is hosting uh, uh, this forum. We are going to talk about it. Mr. Kilel also tried to answer to us about the Tutsi because we receive most of the comments of people to they want more clarification, more highlights about uh, Tutsis who are really there, these people who are taking over Cong Congo, because we do also call, they do call uh, Tutsi Congolese. You know, they've got the citizenship, but they are from uh, Rwanda. They call them Tutsi. But uh, we're going to have more uh, inside about uh, the Tutsi. We're also going to talk about the presence of uh, United Nations. Uh, we do call them uh, peace, uh, peacemakers, but uh, peacekeepers. We really ask ourselves if really they're doing their job uh, in our country. So let's go straight to the first uh, question of the day, Mr. Kilele. Uh, my question will be, I suppose not to be with you on the stage to keep discussing or making interview. You're supposed to be part of uh, the members or the invited one during that forum that taking place in mid this weekend. So I wonder why you didn't take place because you call yourself a president of a political party, but most of the politicians are here in South Africa, they are going to partake on that uh, forum. But you're still with us here. What's happening? Mm, thank you. The conclave or the meeting which is taking place in 
in Midrand, here in Johannesburg, is not convened by the Congolese citizens. It is a forum organized by Tutsi, uh, and their Congolese collaborators. But I know the majority of people, the ring leaders, um, who are uh, not participating at that conference are all Rwandans, uh, few Ugandans and Burundian, but mostly it is the Tutsi. So I cannot go and uh, attend a meeting with occupant, with uh, thieves and uh, jealous people. It is not a meeting conveyed by Congolese people. Uh, just similar to what happened in Sun City uh, in, in 2016, which uh, was ushered into history as uh, inter-Congolese dialogue. Many a times I've explained to the world that it was not an inter-Congolese dialogue, and uh, one is to prove me wrong. It was an international dialogue uh, during which the international community forced onto the Congolese people uh, fake leaders uh, whom they infiltrated in Congo uh, to help them loot Congo and humiliate uh, Congolese nations, I mean nation. So it is not a Congolese uh, conclave which is taking place in, in, uh, in Midrand, here in Johannesburg. It is a forum of conspirator looters, criminals, terrorists, thieves, and murderers uh, who are envious of Congo and Congolese resources, who have tasted milk and honey, which they don't have in their small, tiny, and poor country uh, of shit, the country called Rwanda, where they have got a leader who is a thief and a criminal and they must prove me the contrary. So I couldn't go and join, otherwise I would be called a criminal and a thief against my country as well, and that I don't want. Yeah, I know, Mr. President, but, uh, but, but, but f for now, apparently, Congolese, they don't, they don't focus on these uh, nationalities, uh, citizenship uh, issues. They are focusing about what to make, uh, what the way forward to the DRC. You know, and knowing that uh, Mr. Kilele is a really 100% Congolese, and to them they're so-called Congolese, they've got also citizenship reason why they gathered together, right? You're talking about who? Talking about Moise Katumbi and other participants. <laughs> Only um, a Congolese citizen who doesn't know history can forget about nationality. Countries exist because people have got nationalities, and nationalities exist because of the denomination of the country. Uh, first of all, we have to highlight to the world opinion that uh, the host, Mr. Moise Katumbi, whose real name is not, uh, is not Moise Katumbi, his name is Soriano. Uh, that guy is uh, traveling around the world with more than six passports. Uh, Congolese, Rwandan, Jews, uh, Greek, really? yeah, uh, Portuguese, etc., etc. Well, he's got money and he can buy anything. Mm. In, uh, the only thing that he can't buy is life. That means when death comes, money cannot buy that. But he's able to buy everything. He's got jet, he's got cars, etc. So what is a passport for him in a, a country, any country where people need money? And when he comes and he introduces himself as having billions he can invest easily over a day, overnight, they can sell him a passport. And that's what happens. So we have to highlight this to the world. We, we, we highlighted it in French and in, uh, in our Congolese languages that Mr. So-called Moise Katumbi, the owner of the mighty football club TP Mazembe, is not a Congolese citizen. And I am... I am warning our South African brothers and sisters to know about this. Moise Katumbi is not a Congolese citizen. He is a Zambian national uh, whose father was a Jew, a refugee in Congo, running away from uh, the massacre of Jews by Hitler in Germany. 
he came to Congo in the 30s or 40s and uh, he gave birth to some kid and Moise Katumbi mother was a domestic worker in the house of the Jew and that Jew impregnated that domestic worker to give birth to Katumbi. So Katumbi is not a Congolese citizen. He has no Congolese blood. He has got uh, Greek, Jewish, and Zambian blood. He is not a Congolese citizen. He is an usurper who must be arrested, uh, judged, and jailed. And if possible, because of the crime that the crimes, I mean, that he has committed, he should be executed because he's a thief, he's an economic uh, murderer, and we know the many Congolese citizens that he has killed. He was involved in many murders. So the ambition that he has got, which is inflaming him of late of becoming a president in Congo, mm -hmm. is just foolishness, if not madness. Mm -hmm. And we will do all our best to debar him from uh, fulfilling his dream. Because he's not a Congolese citizen. It's not a Congolese citizen, but unfortunately, some of the Congolese, or most of the Congolese, for now, not saying many Congolese, but most of the Congolese are behind him. He's having a political party, a friend of Moise Katumbi, is having a, a mighty giant, one of the mighty football club in Africa, TP Mazembe. He's, uh, he's a businessman, he's, uh, he's creating more jobs, he's creating uh, uh, you know, more companies, he's, he's, he's a businessman in Congo, and he's giving jobs to people in Congo. The reason why is Congolese also supporting him to the Congolese uh, who are supporting him what the w message can you give to them because they don't even care about all the analysis you are doing right now for for them it's like oh this is our boss and furthermore as this forum is taking place he's the one who's leading it and we don't know what he's gonna say about it we're gonna hear more about it at the end of the forum and uh, he says I quote if you allow me to say that, is addressing by saying in the audience, as the captain of the team that want to win, how much sincere are these words, and does it get ambition to pretend to become a, a president of DRC? Thank he you. call himself. All right, it's a very long question. Uh, starting with uh, the first part, yes. um, the Congolese who are following him, or who consider him as a uh, a leader. As I said before, they are like commodity which is being bought by somebody who has got money. Okay. He has got money, he can buy anything, he can buy anyone. So the bunch of Congolese who are defending him and claiming that he is their leader uh, are Congolese who are hungry, who don't have job, who can't create job for themselves, and um, who expect much from him. Probably they think they will work in his cabinet, they will be ministers, they will get positions that will, they see their bellies, they don't see the grandeur of the, of the country and the welfare of the whole Congolese nation. So they, they don't know what they are doing because they are hungry, that all. As regards T.P. Mazembe, T.P. Mazembe is a football club that he met long before he got born himself, even T.P. Mazembe existed. Now, uh, any businessman who has got money can invest in a country, he comes and he buys a team, it becomes his, his team. We see it in Europe uh, where the, the Russian Abramovich uh, bought, I don't know, uh, Chelsea, I don't know which. So anybody can, can come in a country, but when you come legally, uh, we've proven uh, finance. You can buy shares or you can buy the whole uh, business. and and. And, and run it. So it is, not, it is not something special. But I know them who have got the agenda of dominating Congo. They knew that Congo is a footballistic nation. When we push the team forward, they will forget about the way we are looting their country. Oh, yeah. And that is one of the strategies used by Tutsi and by the looters. It is not himself who is in TP Mazembe. There are people who boost money in the team. Oh, yeah. uh, to elevate him to a certain level so that they could consider him as a leader. But he's not a, he's not a, a leader. And we will do all our best to debar him, as I say, from becoming 
I live in Congo because he's not a Congolese citizen. So someone may ask Mr. Kilele, come yeah. on, President, it's like you got something against Moise Katum. All along, when you step in the studio or the interview, always attack Moise Katum. Is any message, in short, can tell Moise Katum? Because probably, I'm sure, friends of Moise Katum, uh, followers and so on, they're busy watching you, watching you or at the moment. They've been watching you for all along attacking Mr. Moise Katumbi. Is any message you can give to him, particularly before we go to what he caught as a captain? Well, the message is what I'm giving them. I am not minding my words. I am telling them they are naive to believe that uh, so-called between bracket Moise Katumbi can lead country. Moise Katumbi is a criminal. I am telling them he's a criminal, he's a fraudster who has looted Congo. And before I develop that, Moise Katumbi, this is not the first, nor the second, nor the third, nor the fourth, nor the sixth interview uh, I am shooting in which I'm talking about you, just what you say. Yeah, what I've got against him is the fact that he's a criminal. He loots and looted Congo, and he continues looting Congo. That's number one. Number two, Moise Katumbi. Look at me because you know me, and you cannot deny that you don't know me. Because I have got your record of conversation between you and me. Maybe you didn't know that any time you were talking to me. You, the time you were the governor of Katanga, in the southern part of Congo, closer to Zambia. Together with Gabriel Kyungu Wakumwanza, who was the president of the provincial assembly. You crooked me money, you too. Moise Katumbi and Kyungu Wakumwanza. And if I'm blackmailing you, open up a case against me. If I am insulting you or I am lying against you because you are a millionaire and a billionaire, with the money which is not yours, which you stole from Congo, because you are a poor boy born in Zambia, you have nothing, and in your country there is nothing, even in Israel there is no wealth. It lives thanks to the donation of America, that all. So, if I am lying, Mr. Moise Katumbi, even if it is one rent, one dollar that you got from me, it was, and it remains, and it is my money. You took it from me. And I have got proof of it. So if I am lying, take me to court. And I'm ready to go to court and I want to see you and Gabriel Kyungwa Kumwanza because I've got evidences. You and Kyungwa Kumwanza and the person that you sent to me called Jean, uh, I think Jean Kankwanda. I've got his picture and I've got exchanges of letters mm -hmm. between you, Moise Katumbi, Kyungwa Kumwanza, and myself. I've got all the correspondences. You can come and burn my house, but I kept the majority of this in, 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 in cloud, in internet. It is there because I knew that would happen. So I have got that problem that okay. he, he stole from me. That is number one. Number two, him and, Mose and Gabriel Kyungu were plotting to assassinate me, both. Really? Yeah. I have got also, proof of account which he opened in a local bank in Lubumbashi to entice me to keep money there and get a way to get me out of where I am. I've got all, all those proof in my name and in the name of certain members of my party. So he's not a credible guy. He's a thief. He's a liar. So he must know that I have got all the conversation. Even when he, he claimed to plot to kill his mentor and friend, Hippolyte Kajambere Kanambe, uh, the, 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 the fake Joseph Kabila. I have got everything. Mm. The only thing that he knows and they know to do is to kill people. And I'm waiting for them. Yo, 
Viewers all over the world, all the four hours of Congo Dialogue.com, you are watching Espace Dialogue with me, Josué Boloa, l'international. So you are more than welcome to comment, your, to give, to post your comment, to give us a shout. Furthermore, traditionally, Congo used to import and export its goods via the railway of Benguela. It is a railway which quit Katanga, running, I think, 2,000 kilometers into Angola, up to the Lobito port. It was a shorter way and distance than taking good from Lubumbashi to the southern Africa. It is a long, very, very long distance. It is him when he became the governor of Katanga, who sabotaged the railway of Benguela Railway, and encouraged mm -hmm. the land transport of goods and looting of Congo mm -hmm. because he created a road company that he calls Akuna Matata and too many more mm -hmm. uh, transport companies to loot Congolese resources and to come to sell to Southern Af Af Africa and, and the worldwide. Mm -hmm. It is his, his trucks that transport that and which charges a lot of money to the Congolese so-called government. I'm not jealous of him, but it was and it is a way to loot Congolese resources. So we, we will no longer tolerate thieves to continue uh, managing our country or mismanaging our country. Mm. So he, he, he is not capacitated to lead Congo because he is the representative of Paul Kagame in Congo. His wife is a niece of Paul Kagame and who represented the interest of Paul Kagame mm -hmm. in many small, small screen companies in Congo. Mm -hmm. So they want to replace the so-called Joseph Kabila with another Joseph Kabila linked to the, to the maestro criminal Paul Kagame. So by bringing him into power, nothing would have changed in Congo. So we want to put an end to the dominance of Tutsi who are sponsorized, I mean sponsored internationally by criminals. So by saying that he's, he's addressing to the audience that uh, he, he is talking to them as the captain of the team that want to win, uh, means that uh, he's, he's willing to be that ambition that, that he is, has. One wonders, where does he get that ambition to be a president? Mr. Moise Katumbi, you spoke to me many times. You can't deny it. You spoke to me in 2011, the whole 2011 and 2012. You could phone me five to ten times a day, you, Moise Katumbi. You can't deny it. You told me in Swahili, this is what you told me. Mukubwa, President, me si joe yangu politics, si ko politicien. Me niko tu commerçant. Nalikuwa nafanya commerce. Eh, C'est tout ce que je suis. Mi suju yangu politique. Alors, tuko tunapena kuku. Sukuma we ukue president. It means, this is what Moïse Katumbi told me. Addressing himself to me. He said, President Kilele, I know nothing in politics. Mm. I am a tradesman, a businessman. Mm -hmm. That's all what I know. I didn't even study math. Uh, I'm very happy as I'm planning to help you to become president. On one side, the intention was to capture me and assassinate me. And on the other side, probably, it was sincere in his word. But at, at the later moment, I discovered that they were plotting to catch me and kill me. Okay. Yeah. So he told himself that he's not a politician, that he knows nothing in politics, which is true. He knows nothing. He knows nothing in politics. Now, what, what, what is pushing him now to become a president? It is because the world criminal, Paul Kagame, is shaking as he is likely to lose all the interest that he has in Congo under uh, his aide de camp, his bodyguard, Joseph Kabila, who became president by chance uh, in Congo. 
So that, that is probably what is pushing him. But himself, mm -hmm. he knows consciously mm -hmm. in innermost in that he doesn't have the charisma to become a president because he knows nothing in politics and is nothing. But he's going to learn as other presidents are learning, well, Mr. President, well, Mr. Kilele. Do you think that Joseph Kabila learned something? The only skill Tutsi have got is to lie, to steal, and to kill. That is what the Tutsi are best of. I admit, to lie, to steal, and to kill. And him has gone to that school to learn those skills there of lying, stealing, and killing. Mr. President, Mr. Kilele, so but, but he has learned how to steal, and that's all. Yeah, Mr. Kilele, by listening to Moise Katumi, he's been exiled as he's all some, some, some years ago now in France and Belgium and Europe all along and watching him on interviews. Apparently, by listening to him, he has that uh, the Congolese is in his heart. He feel like, okay, he also fighting against the regime in place. Apparently, he's, he's against what happened in DRC. He also fights for the population, for Congolese. He also also, I, I disagree what uh, Mr. Joseph Kabila is doing, the way he's ruling the country. Apparently, he's also on the side of the population, isn't it? By listening to his, all the statements whenever he passes to the TV channels. You know, every flatterer has got sweet words. I repeat, every flatterer has got sweet word. Just like him, he's a flatterer. Just like the Tutsi, uh, maybe it will be one of your questions, the modus operandi of the Tutsi, how they operate. We must warn the world about how the Tutsi operate. You get me? Yeah, he speaks uh, sweetly, the way you say. But Moise Katumbi has never been an opponent to the so-called fake Joseph Kabila. Moïse Katumbi is among the architect of the power of his friend and collaborator, Hippolyte Kajamber Kanambe. He is not an opponent, we, we, we must tell the truth. He is not the opponent and he hasn't been in exile. He was detached by Joseph Kabila, so-called, to infiltrate the opposition and the Congolese diaspora in Belgium, in France, and wherever Congolese people have sought uh, asylum. He is not an opponent. He is, he is the one, together with Kamere, who run propaganda uh, to get this guy elected and re-elected and fraud because he did it. Uh, Joseph Kabila has never been elected in Congo. So, and he is the one who helped him, who helped the political American number, the fake Joseph Kabila, to loot Congo and to sell strategic minerals to terrorist country. The uranium of Congo has been looted by Moise Katumbi. It is known, it is that Kilele who said it, it is written. The, the, the uranium of Congo has, has landed into terrorist country which are threatening peace in the world, which are threatening peace in America, peace in, in, in England, in France, in Belgium. The uranium of Congo is in the hand of terrorists because of Moses, Moise, Kab Moise Katumbi together with, with, with Joseph Kabila. So he is not an opponent. Moise Katumbi is not an opponent. Yeah, all the viewers. Panama papers, which were revealed, revealed billion of money, which Moses Katumbi uh, stole from Congo and stashed this money into foreign banks together with the family of Joseph Kabila. So how can he claim to be an opponent who has been in exile. It is a lie, and it is what we are fighting against. We want to highlight this to the world, that uh, Moïse Katumbi is a dangerous person, is a liar, is a razor blade, and he is dangerous. Oh, Moïse Katumbi is dangerous. This is the inside out, if you can call it, of Moïse Katumbi. If you are happy, you agree or disagree about what uh, President Kilele is busy raising as an issue about uh, Moïse Katumbi, you are more than only come to post your view, to comment, and to call, even if you don't mind, or SMS us. The number is on numbers on your screen. You are more than welcome. This is a space dialogue where la connaissance et la réflexion se rencontrent. Right? We are doing an English version. 
so that we can uh, also uh, reach out other people in Africa or over the world in America. You can, uh, you know, all the planets are connected to congodialogue.com. This is www.congodialogue.com. I'm with uh, Mr. President Kilele here in South Africa in Johannesburg. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for being with us. Okay, we've been talking about uh, uh, Moïse Katumbi, who is having a forum here that we call a conclave de force de changement. We call it in French, force de changement. You know, conclave for a change. So he's bringing a new idea, a new speech, a new word that he really needs change. So this conclave or forum is taking place here in South Africa for this weekend. So we'll hear the up outcoming of this uh, forum and then we'll keep you posted and keep you updated about what's happening in mid and in south africa here so mr president before we go uh, uh to other questions uh, and actuality and news around the world in south africa and, and here in kinshasa um another question came in my mind i want to ask you about uh, if moise katumbi is like a favorite one to become a few pre a next president of drc uh, is he really, first of all, qualified to be a president? As you said, that he is not a Congolese. Is any um, foreign person allowed to be a president of a country, a certain country? Well, when a country is not well uh, managed, anyone can become a president. Uh, it is well known across the world that Congo is uh, a dead state. It, it is... Uh, a state which exists on the map, mm -hmm. but administratively it doesn't exist because uh, it doesn't have an army, it doesn't have a security and intelligence service, mm -hmm. it doesn't have a strong, a, a strong currency, and uh, it doesn't have institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, the current institutions in Congo are all obsolete. Uh, None of them is qualified to be where he is. The, the Senate, the Parliament, the Executive Cabinet, it means Ministerial Cabinet, all of them are illegitimate right up to the one they are calling president who is no longer a president, uh, the fake Joseph Kabila. None of them is qualified to be there. Now, if you, you read through the so-called Congolese constitution, which is really not a constitution. It is a, a chart of occupation, mm -hmm. which they concocted uh, to strangle and strangulate Congo. There is an article which interdicts non-citizens uh, to ascend to certain position uh, in the administration. Uh, just for your remembrance, when you go to the U.S., you find the cinema actor, um, the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. He could be only a governor, mm -hmm. but he couldn't ambition to be the president of a country because he was not born in that country. Mm -hmm. And you find such examples in many countries in the world. Mm -hmm. If such can be in other countries, why not in the RC? Their constitution, we just said, the concocted, says to be a president of Congo, mm -hmm. you must be born of uh, both parents being Congolese citizens. Mm -hmm. Your mother and your father must both be Congolese citizens. Mm -hmm. The current constitution of the occupant in Congo excludes totally Mr. Uh, Moise Katumbi mm -hmm. to ambition to be a president even to be a governor. Yeah, he's been governor for yes. over seven years. As I say, because the country doesn't exist administratively. Mm -hmm. So we have got a club of mafias or thieves who came and take up a country mm -hmm. thanks to the support of the international community which envies Congo. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the so-called Kabila. He doesn't have any blood, any Congolese blood. They call him uh, Joseph Kabila. Kabila doesn't have a son of that age. I said this many times since, since 2006 during the so-called inter-Congolese dialogue in the studio of SABC in South Africa. He is not a son of the late Laurent Kabila. Kabila is not his father. So both 
are usurpers. They are people who have hijacked mm -hmm. Congolese citizenship and would deserve nothing more than getting arrested for violating our territory, penetrating our country uh, illegally without permission and ascending to such higher position in administration in the country. These two guys and, and, and many of them uh, that I have denounced in the media don't deserve to be in Congo. They must be arrested. Let me name some. Bizimana Karahamuetu, who calls himself Bizima Kara, is not a Congolese citizen. This guy succeeded to be foreign affairs ministers during Laurent Kabila regime. He ran away with 15 million, I think, or 5 million US dollars from the foreign affairs. He ran away with this money and he came to South Africa. He became an opponent. Deogratius Bugera is not a Congolese citizen. Kengo Adondo, who is the president of the Senate in Congo, who is a mulatto, they call him a colored. Leon Kongo Adondo, his real name is Leon Lobich. He is not Kengo Adondo. His name is Leon Lobich. His mother is a Tutsi from Rwanda, and his father is a Polish from Poland. Vital Kamere. He is a Hutu from Rwanda. He is not a Congolese citizen. He studied with my younger brother in the Faculty of Economy in Congo. And he used to come to my bedroom, my student room, when I was a student. He is not a Congolese citizen. Thomas Nzirantimana, who goes everywhere to say he's a Congolese citizen, he is not a Congolese citizen. Azarias Rubero, who is the Minister of Home Affairs, of, of Land Affairs, I mean Minister of Interior in Congo, he is not a Congolese citizen, he is a Tutsi, and once he was arrested in Congo, he was caught with a, 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 Rwandan, a, Tutsi, a Rwandan passport, and himself recognized that he is a Tutsi. We don't have Tutsi in Congo. L let me highlight this. We don't have a tribe called Tutsi in Congo. Because traditionally, to be a Congolese, you must belong to a tribe. Each tribe identifies itself to a certain portion of land. Each tribe identifies itself with a traditional leader. It can be a monarch, a chief, or whichever title it may hold. Each tribe in Congo has a language. Those are the three criteria, criterion to be a Congolese. So you must, your tribe must have been in Congo before 1885. That is after the Berlin Conference in Germany where they decided Congo to be what it is. Your, your tribe must have been settled in Congo during that time or before that time. Yet before that time, we had no Rwandans in Congo. Even after the independence of Congo, you know, they came few, they were brought in Congo as workers to work in mines. Just like you find in South Africa, you find Malawi and Zambian Mozambicans who came to work in mines. The, Loso, the, the Soto and the Bachwana who came to work in mines in South Africa. They can't constitute a tribe when you are an asylum seeker in a certain country. You can't constitute a tribe. So we don't have, we don't have Rwandans in Congo as as, as, as a citizen of Congo because they can't claim a portion of land. They can't claim a traditional leader. They can't claim a language in Congo. In Congo, we have got 450 tribes. If my, my, my memory is, is faithful, it's 450 tribes. And each tribe has been settled at a certain place 
on a certain land left by the ancestors. They speak their language, their dialect, and they have got a traditional leader. Yeah. So the so-called Tutsi in Congo don't uh, fulfill the, those three conditions that uh, I have given. So we don't have, we don't have Tutsi in Congo. We, since a long time, they came to us, I mean they immigrated uh, to our country, I think long before independence, I think in the 50s, 57 or 50s. They, they, they didn't really immigrate willingly. They were brought, it is what they call a colonial missionary of Rwandan, Rwandans in Congo. They were brought because they were saved by the Belgium as there was much conflict between the Hutu and Tutsi in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So the Belgian brought some to us and gave them job to work in mines. That is, in, in a nutshell, how I can explain the presence of Rwandans in Congo. But these people go all around the world to lie to people. They came to South Africa, they lied to South Africa that they are Congolese citizens. I am repeating and telling this to my beloved brothers of South Africa, mm -hmm. that Joseph Kabila is not a Congolese citizen, Bizima Karamueto is not a Congolese citizen, Moise Katumbi is not a Congolese citizen. Kengo Adondo is not a Congolese citizen. Vital Kamere is not a Congolese citizen. Even if you are doing business with those people, I would wish you arrest them. Del Gracious Rubera is not a Congolese citizen. They are all liars. They are all flatterers. And uh, when a responsible government ascend mm -hmm. in Congo, we will launch warrant of arrest of those people for the crime they have committed in Congo, we will judge them and we will throw them into jail because they have hijacked our citizenship and they have told a lot of lies against Congo and the Congolese people across the world. This is a word come from Mr. Kilele Jemadari. Uh, just your last word for this show of the day. Thank you. Uh, dear viewers, uh, for the second time we have uh, a shot an interview in English. Uh, thanks to the journalists around me, uh, who suggested and some uh, viewers who wanted to know what I used to talk about mostly in English, in Lingala and Swahili, some of our languages in the country. Our mission is to shed light on the obscurity, the, the obscure clouds which have been brought over Congo by the Tutsi. Tutsi are a small community living in Rwanda and Burundi, and some of them immigrated to neighboring countries like Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania, and in Congo. I am warning the world about and against this community. The Tutsi are uh, a disdainful human stock. They are liars, they are flatterers, whatever they are. They have got a modus operandi of pushing to you their daughters, even their wife to entice you to sleep with them and little by little they will suck you. Either they poison you or they just disappoint you. That's how the Tutsi operate across the world and they have succeeded to penetrate many spheres of international politics and business. Wherever they are, they call themselves Congolese citizens. Tutsi are not Congolese citizens. We don't have Tutsi tribe in Congo, nor Tutsi population in Congo would claim to be Congolese citizens. We have got Tutsi immigrants in Congo. And those who were brought by the colonial mission to come and work in our mining, that's what we have. Any one of them who would like to be a Congolese citizen would be allowed if you apply legally to be a Congolese citizen under some criterion. 
as long as they don't want to comply with our rules and regulations, these people are to be arrested, judged, and put in jail. And those who have committed crime should as well be executed. This is not harsh because America, which is leading the world in democracy, continue to have death penalty. So if Kilele talks about execution, I don't think that this hurts people. I am warning the world once more that Tutsi are very dangerous. They are liars. Pay attention to Bizima Karamuetu is a liar and a thief. Pay attention to Paul Kagame, to Bizima Karamuetu, to, Nira, to Nzirantimana. All of them know me. I am speaking as a Congolese citizen, and there is no exaggeration in what I am saying. Moise Katumbi as well is not a Congolese citizen, and he must prove the contrary that Kilele is lying. These people have hijacked our nationality, and we will issue warrant of arrest against them because they are proven thieves, liars, murderers, and looters. There is a day Congo will regain its sovereignty and a real change will take place, not the change promoted by Moïse Katumbi and his clique of thieves, jealous and envious people who are circumventing the world, talking shit. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the end of our discussion with uh, President Kilele, a president of a national Congolese party here in South Africa in Johannesburg. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your uh, comment. We hope that you've been instructed, you've been, uh, you know, very open-minded so that uh, during this, uh, this interview. So any question, any comment, numbers are there. Comment, call, SMS, post your comments on our Facebook page. Thank you so much to our coordinator, uh, Francine Ngembe, there in uh, Europe. Thank you so much to Blaze, who was behind the camera. Thank you so much also to you for your uh, opportunity. So if you do have some suggestions, some questions, so do not hesitate. If you also need to have some uh, any questions or subjects or topic we w you want us to discuss about it, please phone us, SMS us, who is going to be welcome.